wow, that, that was a heck of an ending. Maryland falls 31 29 to Purdue. This is a big dog post game show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. I got my string of invectives out before he went on the air. Wow, what, what? I've never seen anybody get called for being downfield on a two point conversion, but beyond that, what did you see, Mason? Yeah, um, Maryland and Purdue. It was just a pretty pretty poorly played football game overall by both teams. Uh, Maryland just found a way to lose today. You know, made every every play to win. Defense did a really really good job. Three straight turnovers, but in the end, um, just just didn't get it done. Maryland's defense really stood up in the second half. For most of the first half, I felt that Maryland tried to give the game away. Purdue wouldn't take it. Then Purdue returns the favor with the three turnovers that Maryland can't score off of. In the end, there were fireworks. There's a lot of uh, dead football in between. You got to hand it to the Maryland defense. Aiden O'Connell really can throw the ball. Purdue ran some innovative plays. Uh, I'm not sure where the Maryland offense went for most of the second half. Um, it, it has a tough loss to take. One reason is that you rarely get a chance for Maryland to go five and one and and that chance is now by the boards who's your player of the game for maryland what's the best thing you saw from your turfs yeah jay sean barham can really rush the passer i think that has to be it and and i think that his spot needs to move um to that jack linebacker spot for maryland to give them somebody that's efficient uh, at rushing the passer there and i think that uh the turps found a way to get to the quarterback, which was a little bit different, but they couldn't protect their own. And at the end of the day, um, quarterback, uh, Maryland's quarterback lost them the game. Just just didn't make the throws. Was short on a couple of balls, missed a couple of deep balls, and, and that cost you, along with the refs, which really... The refs, my really goodness, cost again, Maryland the game. again, uh, they could not call the offsides on the extra point that got blocked. They call an ineligible receiver downfield, which maybe he was, but if they started the play on the two-yard line on a two-point conversion where Lee actually bailed it out and, and the pass was caught by Rock. I, I'm somewhat stunned. I really, we knew this was a big game. We knew this was the game you had to have to make this a magical season. And it just, once again, does not go Maryland's way. We'll go inside and catch the Loxley press conference and hopefully gain some perspective on this. We'll be back uh, for our post-post game after the Lox press. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Forgates. We make your company work. I'm Martha Smith with Viner Forgates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. On the deck here at Gossett after Maryland's 31-29 loss. Just heard Mike Loxley. Uh, Mason talked to Leah after the game. I talked to Corey Deitches a little bit with Durrell Chime. Um, anything pop from that press conference to you? No, I mean, that was um, about as coach speak as it gets. Uh, I don't really, you know, Loxley, the only thing that I really liked that I heard from him is he keeps talking about cleaning up the penalties, and he finally just took responsibility. He's the leader here, and he, he's got to find a way to get through his, to his guys to um, just stop committing these penalties that are that's killing this team. You know, uh, of course, the ref questions came up. He, he had nothing really to say. Uh, talking to the other media members, I've never seen an ineligible downfield on a play from the two-yard line like that that I recall. Uh, man, the, the missed extra point. But, you know, the Corey Deitches play at the end of the first half, he ends up carrying the defenders in the end zone again. He has really made some of those kind of plays for the Terps this year. That's a positive. And he brought up, Coach Loxley brought up, 
that the fight didn't go out of this team even when it got down by eight points. So they did march down the field and tie it up. And you see when the rhythm in this offense works, they seem unstoppable. But man, there have been some gaps where that wasn't exactly the case. Leah ends up 20, where did he end up here? 26 of 38 uh, with the one pick and three touchdowns today. On paper, it's, it looks like a good game. In person, I, I think there were plays that were left out there on the field. Well, Running game wasn't really there. Yes. In person, in the flow of the game, there's just moments where they had nothing today. They just could not move the ball, and, and they're getting opportunities with the ball in the 35, the 40, uh, the plus 40 off those turnovers, and you just you can't figure out any, any way to jumpstart any play that they could have pulled out. And... At the end there, you know, they run a couple screens. They did some things that they didn't do any that they did differently. And what you saw was there's three linemen that are getting out out beyond the numbers on one side, as opposed to when they ran the same play after one of those interceptions. And Jalen Duncan's like you know lunging at a guy to make a one block. He makes that block. That play goes for 40 yards. It's that team almost looked like it needed the desperation moments today to really get going. Scripted and desperation moments were the only time they really put up points. Interesting. I, I, I could see how you could say that. Uh, the defense, I think A.D. O'Connell is a really good quarterback, especially a really good college quarterback. Defense really played well enough to win a game. And, yeah, at the end, they gave out. I was waiting as Maryland had a chance after chance offensively and didn't do anything for the defense to, to let up. It took until Maryland scored that touchdown to Hemby on the right sideline, and then right away Purdue comes back and scores and just Terps needed this win today if you really want to have a magical season you needed to win today they didn't look do but it. that's out the window there is no magical season now now it's about how many games you can win between now and there and taking the next step and you can almost i mean i know we all wanted it and you saw the path to it but look still a step forward they're in these games they're playing them till the end and this is a losing football program right now. It's going to take a lot to turn that around. I don't have anything more insightful than that from the man who wears the hat with the chicken on his head. I will take that as the final words for today. Terps fall. It was, it was wild and exciting at the end, but just needed that win. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason. Thanks for watching the Big Dog Postgame Show.